So today I want to take a look at all four AFC North teams, the rosters, and kind of break them down because, let's be honest, all that matters really is the AFC North. If we can take care of the AFC North, we can make the playoffs. If we can take care of the AFC North, we can go win a Super Bowl. Toughest division in football by far. And this year, the AFC West, Chiefs, Broncos, Chargers, and the Raiders all have to play the AFC North. So, welcome, AFC West. You're about to find out why the gauntlet is so horrific. So this is all roster, which, again, I still think is a very, very good Super Bowl roster. Great receiving core. We got Ch Chase. We got Irwin. We got T. Higgins still. Jermaine Burton. I think Yoshi's going to take another step forward. Chuck Sizzle. You know, we'll see how he does on kick and punt returns. I say all offense as a... I say a receiving core, I'm going to give an A+. I think a receiving core is one of the best in the division. It's not saying much because Pittsburgh's receiving core is really not that great. Baltimore is always decimated except for, obviously, they, they went ahead and extended Rashad Bateman. They also have Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is really good. But other than Zay Flowers, I'm not really too scared of it. Mark Andrews one of the best tight ends in the league. But our receiving core, and again, I'm not including tight end, I think it's one of the best. I would say the best in the division, A+. Plus. Offensive line. I think our offensive line right now at this moment in time, we'll see how everything turns out, is a B plus. You know, I don't think it's the greatest, but I think it's a pretty good offensive line. And I think for what we need it to do, which is, you know, get us to 18 games, 17 games actually, I think it can do that. And I don't think it's the. Mm. Pittsburgh's offensive line's gotten so much better this offseason. Baltimore, they're kind of decimated with their offensive line. Um,. Cleveland always has a good offensive line. I don't know if I would say we have the best offensive line in the division, though. I think we are up there, maybe like one, uh, maybe one or two. Oh, sorry, maybe two or three. But I, I, we're better than Baltimore when it comes to our division, when it comes to our offensive line. But I think that's even then, I think maybe a little bit shaky. Because uh, Baltimore does have Tyler Lindenbaum, who's really good. Stanley, I don't think is good really at all. Cleveland is going to be their right guard because they got rid of Zeitler. Their left guard, I think they should go with, personally speaking here, Andrew Voorhees. He was their seventh-round draft pick who actually had an ACL tail when they drafted him. And that would be, in my opinion, the best option because, come on, man, Jason Voorhees, Andrew Voorhees. Like, how are you not going to go with him? Nonetheless, though, they'll probably go with, oh, uh, what's his name? He's like a six foot eight um, Hawaiian dude. I forget what his name is. But anyway, I think we have either second or third best in the division. We might have the best. It's arguable. Cleveland has a really good offensive line, and Pittsburgh got a lot better. Tight end group. Um, Baltimore has the best for Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, in my opinion. Second, Pittsburgh does have Fryermuth and Darnell Washington. I think we're better than Fryermuth and Darnell Washington. Um, Cleveland have David Achoku, who, without Joe Flacco, I don't think it's going to be anything anymore. So I'm going to say we have the second best, if not, no, we have the second best. I'm not, I, I can't even put us above Mark Andrews. Yeah. I, I'm okay with Mark Andrews because Mark Andrews did come out and say how, um, Logan Wilson was not a dirty player and, and he did not try to hurt Mark Andrews and he did defend Logan Wilson. So I give Mark Andrews a lot of credit for that. Because he could have just went and bandwagoned with the rest of the NFL and said, Hey, Larry Richards is a dirty But instead, he actually had, was the man. He was a man. He was man enough to step up and say, No, he was not trying to hurt me. Quarterback be the best quarterback in the division. Shut up, everyone else. Running back core. When Nick Chubb is healthy, he's the best in the league. So, he's. I think Cleveland has the best running back core. We are a solid number two. I don't care about 30-year-old Derrick Henry. Okay, get out of here with that crap. Outside of Derrick Henry, Baltimore has... Oh, they have Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell is really good. And if you watch my NFL draft video from last year, I wanted Keaton Mitchell so bad on the Bengals. Yeah, I think we had number two. I think number three, though, is very close when it comes to Baltimore. And then number four is, is uh, Harris and... Whatever the other guy's name is, who they want him to start. Anyway, defensive line. 
Cleveland probably has the best. Then it's probably going to be Pittsburgh. I still think we're, we're, I think we're number three. But I think it's arguably number three. I mean, outside of T.J. Watt, when T.J. Watt goes down with injury, I'm not really too scared of the uh, the Steelers' offense defensive line. I'm not really scared of the Ravens except for um, Matt Abuke. Other than him, I'm not really too scared of them. I think we have a solid defensive line, though, overall-wise. Linebacking core. Um, I think we have a better linebacking core. Uh, see, I don't know. T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith is really good with Pittsburgh. Uh, Baltimore has Roquan Smith, but that's pretty much it. I'm not scared of Odolph Owe, whatever the heck you say his name. Um, I'm not, and Cleveland usually are decimated the linebacker position. Um, secondary, Baltimore has the worst, in my opinion. <laughs> Seals have the worst. Um, Cleveland's really good. Baltimore actually has a pretty good secondary. And we're up there too. Uh, see, I, I would say secondary we're tied. I think secondary, we're, all three of us are tied. And the Squealers are sitting at the very bottom. Alright, so let's go to the Ravens roster. Let's take a look at them. So, Rashad Bateman got extended. So now they have a number two receiver. Their slot receiver is Nelly. They call him Nelly, but his name's Nelson Aguilar. Yes, he's the old New England Patriot, but he started in the Philadelphia Eagles, and he dropped a uh, wide-open touchdown in the Super Bowl. Shout out to him for that. Tyler Wallace, I still think is underrated. Um, Quez Walker, we'll see how he, he works out. He was the fourth-round draft pick. Um, yeah, no, I don't. The rest of these guys are undrafted. Although the Ravens are a team that will take undrafted players and start them. Hey, they're starting Andrew Voorhees. I love that, man. I didn't know that they're starting him, but I do love Andrew Voorhees. I just love his name. Because of Jason Voorhees, obviously. The guy I was talking about who's like a six foot eight guy is this guy right here. Um, I don't know how to say his name in any way possible, but how tall is he actually? He's six foot five. He's Hawaiian. I know he's Hawaiian. I thought he was like six foot eight. See, now I'm disappointed. He's not that good. Anyway, though, Tyler, though, he's probably not going to be that good. He's coming off an ACL tear. They drafted him in the seventh round. He was supposed to be, like, I think a second-round pick in last year's draft, but he ended up falling because he got hurt at the combine. Um, so he ended up falling because he got an ACL tear. Uh, Linderbaum is fine. Ben Cleveland, I don't think he's good at all. They uh, they lost Josh Simpson this offseason. I think he went to Carolina, I want to say. Uh, so they lost one. They also lost Leitler, obviously. Um, Morgan Moses got traded to the Jets, so now they're starting their second round pick as their starting tackle. Um, it's kind of funny. They don't have Patrick McCarry anymore. That's another guy that they used to always put at right tackle. Um, yeah, but Daniel Felly, yeah. Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kolar. Again, they have a good tight end core. Quarterback, they have um, Josh Johnson as their starting quarterback. That's kind of weird. Um, Devin Larry, yeah, wow, their quarterback core is not that good. Running back core, they got Lamar Jackson as the starter, then they got Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell. That's a nice, that's a nice one, two, three running back core. It's not bad. Um, defensive line, Brent Irvin, the 17,000 year old, uh, veteran. How old is he actually? He's 33. Yeah, he feels older than that. Um, Michael Pierce, who is not good, and I don't care Ravens fans, he's not good. He was, he went from the Ravens over to the Vikings, was too overweight to play for the Vikings, went back to the Ravens. They were going to cut him. He took a pay cut. Yeah. Matabuke, obviously, is really good. Odoff Owe, uh, Roquan Smith, Trenton Simpson. Still hasn't gotten much plays happen last year because Patrick Queen was starter. Kyle Van Noy in his 50th season is back. Marlon Humphrey, this is why I say their secondary is kind of questionable, is Nate Wiggins is great. He's all for and run defense, but he's, he could be a lockdown corner. Arthur Mullet, I'm not scared of. I'm not scared of Brandon Stevens. I'm not scared of the ex Miami Dolphins corner here. Um, Armor Davis, they brought him back. I know they cut him at one point. TJ Tampa, I'm not scared of him. He dropped so much, and there's a reason why. We'll find out in this upcoming season. Um, obviously, Marcus Williams, not as good as he used to be, has injury concerns. Kyle Hamilton, amazing. I'm not going to trash him there. All right, so let's look at the Squealers. Squealers! Offensive line, they got Zach Frazier. Really great upgrade, in my opinion. Should be a really good player. Um, left guard, Isaac, same as last year. But they also got Mason McCormick, who 
I really wanted in this NFL draft, so I'm kind of ticked they got him. Um, Troy, the Washington State left tackle, slash tackle in general, he's probably not going to end up being a tackle for them. He'll probably end up moving to guard. He's not really known. I mean, he's he's known for being a tackle in college, but he's not good at tackle. He's, he's going to be a guard. That's what he's going to be at the NFL. Um, Brodick Jones, the left tackle from last year, is now moving to right tackle. I know he played a lot of right tackle last year, actually. James Daniel, right guard, is because they traded away their other guard to the Rams, I want to say. Um, receiving core, Van Jefferson, nothing burger. Roman Wilson is going to be the slot receiver. I don't really scare, I'm not scared of him at all. George Pickens, obviously, we'll see how his mental head case goes. Dezel Mims, um... Quez Watkins, yeah. See, like, their receiving core is crap. I'm not scared of the receiving core. And I'm also not scared of the running back core at all. And then I'm not scared of the quarterback at all. Their tight ends are pretty good. I like their tight ends. But other than that, I'm not really scared of this offense. I'm not scared of Russell Wilson. I'm not scared of Justin Fields. Actually, I'm more scared of Justin Fields than I am Russell Wilson. Justin Fields could actually be really good. Their defense. Uh, let's start with defensive line. Other than the seven-year-old Cam Haywood, I'm not really scared of this defensive line at all. Obviously, T.J. Watt, you got to give him credit. Patrick Queen, we'll see how he works out in um, without Roquan Smith in uh, in Schittsburg. Um, Elandon Roberts, you got Alex Highsmith. Again, their linebacking core is very nice, and they have a really good linebacking core. Secondary-wise, Joey Porter Jr., second year. We'll see how he blossoms. Um, Darius Rush, okay. No, no, nobody there. Dante Jackson's their starting corner. Oh, I feel bad for them. All right, so this is the trade they made with for Deontay Johnson. This is the guy from Carolina. Um, <laughs> surprisingly enough, Dante Jackson was actually a second round pick. I want to say in 2019, 2018, he was actually a second round pick. He just never blossomed for Carolina, but he was a second round pick. Corey Trice, we'll see how he plays. He's actually the guy who got hurt last season, and now he's back. We'll see. He's a seventh-round pick when he was drafted, but he got hurt. He got hurt, like, way early in preseason. It was kind of sad. Um, not pre was it? Not preseason. It was training camp. He tore something. Um, Ryan Watts, okay, sixth-round pick. Yeah, their secondary sucks. Um, Mika Fitzpatrick, obviously, is going to be great. Um, they also lost. I thought they lost someone. They got Deshaun Elliott from Miami. He also used to play for the Ravens. Who also used to play for the Lions. Um, he, he's most known for his time in Baltimore. Um, Kazee back up there. Yeah, their secondary sucks. I'm not scared of the Squealers at all. They're not a scary team. Cleveland. This is a team I think is the most scary. Um, in the AFC North at least. So, obviously, the receiving core got Jerry Judy this offseason, traded for him. They got Elijah Moore for another year. Um, Amari Cooper, Cedric Tillman was their third-round draft pick in 2013, uh, 2023. Jamari Thrash, they got him in the fifth round this year. David Bell um, caught a couple pats against us in that Week 18 game. Other than that, they got Portia Man from the Ravens here. I know I said he played for the 49ers. He, also, he was known for playing for the Ravens for forever. Um, offensive line here, yeah, like star, 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 and star. And then they also got Zach Zinner as a backup. And then they also got, where is he out here? Dar, wait, is he a Conklin, Teller? Where is Dewan Jones? Right there. So they also got Dewan Jones, who could be a starter on most teams. So yeah, their offensive line is absolutely star-studded. Their tight end core, again, without Joe Flacco, I don't think David Joku is going to be anything. Deshaun Watson, again, arguably a good quarterback. Both of these guys have been um, accused of doing some things in their past. So it's kind of funny that they're on the same team. Tyler Huntley from Baltimore. They got DTR still, even though I'm the, I think he'll never start again. Nick Chubb, best running back in the league. Um, and the rest of the running back core, I'm not scared of. Defensively, they, of course, do have Jim Schwartz, who is a Super Bowl-winning defense coordinator. So that's always a scary thing. Um, also, the Ravens lost their defense coordinator, um, Mac McDonald, to the Seattle Seahawks. So that's going to be a different. They got they got they replaced him with a one of the old linebackers from way back in the day, Arthur Brown. Um, it's not saying much. 
T uh, David Tomlinson, uh, Shelby Harris, Miles Garrett. I mean, they have a great defensive line. Even though Zarius Smith is kind of getting up there in age. He's 31, but he should be absolutely fine. They also lost, I believe, Clowney this off. No, no, the Ravens lost Clowney. He used to play for them, though. Um, they got Jeremiah Asola Karamiah, Karamoa. I forget how you say his name. Uh, their linebacking core is fine. They got Devin Bush this offseason. He's a nothing burger. He was a first-round draft pick for the Steelers way back in the day. Ended up being a bust. Jordan Hicks played for Minnesota. Kind of funny. Jordan Hicks actually, he played for Minnesota. Then he went to the Chargers. Then he went back. No, no, I'm thinking about, no, I'm thinking about Eric Kendricks. Um, Jordan Hicks did come from Minnesota. I'm talking about Eric Kendricks. He played for Minnesota, then went to the Chargers. Um, yeah, no, no linebacking core is fine. Secondary-wise, Dezel Ward. You got Greg Newsome. They just picked up the fifth-year option on Greg Newsome, actually. So we'll see how he plays this season, winning a new contract. Emerson, Martin Emerson, okay. There's Again, they lost a couple pieces, I believe, in their secondary this offseason, I want to say. But overall, they're fine. So, again, like I said, I think it's going to be a tough AFC North. But, listen, at the end of the day, if we all band together, right, and work together here, we can make the Chiefs have six losses. Not six losses, four losses. We can cause the Chiefs to have a guaranteed four losses if we all work together and we beat the Queefs, okay? All right? So, at the end of the day, we might all sit here and say... I don't like the squealers. I don't like the rat birds. I don't really mind the Browns, okay? They're Ohio, too. I have no hate for you guys. It's whatever, right? I have hate for the other two. The rat birds and the squealers, you can go to heck. Anyway, as I was saying, we might all have our, you know, opposing views, right? We believe in happiness, family, togetherness, you know, things going well in the world, world peace, the Rat Birds believe in World War III. The Squealers believe in total death. And the Browns believe in massages. Those three things might be all incorrect and false and slanders. But that's beside the point, right? The point is, what I'm trying to make here is... Um... I freaking hate the Rat Birds. And the Squealers.